fellow diamond painting addicts and welcome back to Diamond Painting Anonymous. I'm Daphne and I'm here for part three of my basic versus luxury series. This is going to be the last one of the series. I thought I was going to be able to cover all of this in one video so my mind is kind of blown that I've actually managed to have enough to say that this covers three videos but you all seem very interested in it and every time I thought I was finished, I would think of something else or I would see something else sitting around in my craft room and I'm like, oh, I didn't talk about this or that or whatever. So part three, if you haven't seen parts one and two, I'll stick a link up there. You can start with part one. So part one, we basically covered the basic toolkit, the trays, the wax or whatever sticky stuff you use, putty, glue dots, whatever, the pins themselves and the tips. In part two, I covered more of like other storage and workspaces and things like that. So lighting, tables, and how you kit up your drills, that kind of thing. These in part three are all gonna be kind of extras. These are all things that you don't by any means need, but you might want. I mean, as I said from the very beginning, you can complete a diamond painting with just the supplies that they give you the boat, the plate of wax, the pink pen. You don't need all the other stuff. But if this is something you're going to continue to do as a hobby, having extra tools can make your life easier. So where do I start? I guess let me just start with some small things. So funnels, I guess that's an easy one to start with. This is a collapsible funnel. You see these everywhere. You get them in a lot of, if you buy like a bottle case or something like that, you might get one of these funnels in it. So you can use these and these are helpful for pouring your drills either when you're kitting up into your containers or when you're kitting down to put them back in bags or whatever. I, however, don't like these very much. They're not very sturdy because they're collapsible. The opening doesn't always work well. And so I just didn't really use them. However, lots of people 3D print funnels and they 3D print funnels for different things because of course there's all different kinds of storage. So these are two funnels that I actually use a lot. This one is from Bella Art Dana Cole and this one is for bottles. If you use a bottle case, you just slip the bottle in here, pour your drills in and it will funnel the drills into the bottle. Simple, easy, but if you're dealing with a kit that has a lot of drills or a lot of static, something like this can be super helpful. And I'll be sticking links to all of these down below. So there's that funnel. Then I have this specialty funnel and I get a lot of questions on this one. This one I got from Sasha's 3D printing, which is on Facebook. So you just have to contact her and ask her. This is made for the Elizabeth Ward containers and this bottom part here slips in and clicks into place and then you can pour. It seems quite large, but it actually works really well. And I actually really like how big it is, especially when you're dealing with a lot of static or when I do Elizabeth Ward, I'm usually working with a lot of drills. So having something like this is really helpful. So there's that. What else are kind of one-off tools? Well, you can get ceramic cutters. I don't know if you can see the blade there, but basically for people who like to section their canvases off with washi tape, then you can use a ruler or your washi tape and just run the cutter across it and cut through the washi tape and or the cover sheet to reveal whatever section you're gonna work on and you can work on it that way. I bought these but never really used them because I'm so afraid because I am such a heavy presser that I would cut all the way through the canvas. So I ended up using the seam ripper method but more often, 99% of the time, I'm using release paper, so I don't really use this. But it can be handy if, you, if that is how you work. Some other things that you might need while you're working or kitting up. This is from Bella Art Dana Cole, and this is a multi-tool. So you can stick various tips in here and then just rotate it depending on what multi-placer or single placer you want to be using at a time. I've seen these. This is Bella arts version. This is a little bit smaller. I've seen them at like budget companies, but theirs are usually much larger. So you can get something like that that can help you multi-place. If you want to make sure that your drills are super straight, you can use rulers. Now, I don't typically use rulers. You can get them for round drills or square drills. I've really only ever seen one size of square drills. And beware, because they don't fit every single company's canvas. 
but they can be helpful. You line them up with the grid on your, your canvas, and then you place drills in the openings, and then when you peel it up, you can place the rest of the drills that might have been covered up. Now, all of these, you would be placing round drills, but it would cover the entire section. Now, these come in different sizes. So for instance, this one says 50, 140.5 millimeters. So if you wanna measure your canvas, this one says 141.5, I don't know if you can read that there. This one is a 141. So they come in different sizes. So you may have to kind of play around and see which one fits where the best. Because in my experience, like I said, they do not all fit. Even within the same company, a canvas, one canvas might be one size and then a different canvas is a different size, so. But it can help you, these can certainly help you keep your drills super straight if you're interested in something like that. Another thing that can help keep your drills straight is a straightener. So you might wanna use a plastic straightener like this just to kind of keep your drills in line. If you're using a poured glue canvas especially, it can just give your drills that little nudge to keep them more evenly spaced and that can be helpful. All right, I know I'm going through these kind of fast, but that's just because there's so many of them. So what I've got left, let's see. This is a drill grinder. And this is just an inexpensive one that I got on a budget company, but you can get them all different kinds of places. And I have not used this a lot, but it does come in handy when you need it. And sometimes you get resin drills that weren't quite dry when they packaged them up and so they stick together. And so breaking that them apart with a drill grinder can be helpful. I've seen people say that you can use two trays and put them in between it and kind of smash them that way. You can do that, but in my experience, I end up with drills everywhere. Yes, I have some that kind of broke apart in the tray, but the ones that were at the edges kind of just went flying. Whereas if I use something like this, they kind of stay in there. Now, I don't wanna scratch my resin drills, so I don't do this really, you know, I'm not like super grinding it or anything, but it can be helpful. And again, one of those tools that I've used maybe twice, but it was handy. I've got here, what else? I've got here, oh, a, a brayer or a roller. I use a rolling pin. I do have this brayer, but more often than not, I just use my kitchen rolling pin. You want to make sure that your drills are nicely adhered to your canvas. So a good way to do that is just to go over them with a brayer or a roller and make sure that they stuck. Now, this gets recommended because it's a plastic or rubber material here so that it doesn't break your drills. They say using hard drills. I personally have used a marble rolling pin. I've never had a problem with it breaking any drills and not pressing that hard. I'm just trying to make sure that my drills are stuck really well to the canvas. So a brayer or a rolling pin or something like that can come in handy as well. All right, if we move on to kind of things that have to do with containers, you can find all kinds of specialty things. For example, this is another, it's from the same person that makes the Elizabeth Ward funnels. These are lids made to go on the Elizabeth Ward containers and they're 3D printed. But the Elizabeth Ward containers are just plastic, so after a while they may break. They do not have a hinge like this. They just have kind of a crease and that crease can break over time. So having something like this can be nice to replace those with if that's something that you wanna do if you use a lot of Elizabeth Ward or whatever. Again, nice to have, but not necessary. And if you don't use Elizabeth Ward, then it probably doesn't matter to you. There are also things along that same vein like pool noodles or the table clamps or anything like that that is helpful while you're working on the canvas that you might need. The rest of these are kind of, again, nice to have but not necessary. And you may not want any of these, you may want all of these things, who knows? I'm trying to think about what would make the most sense. I think I'll talk about the label maker first. So I just have this very simple label maker that I got off of Amazon and I use it to label my diamond painting boxes because where I store mine, they're stored on a big shelf and they're stored horizontally. So they're all laying down, but I, I can't see the end of each kit. So like Oraloa and Bella Art and some of the companies that put 
stickers on the end of each kit so that you know what it is. I can't always see those. So I use the label maker to put the name of the kit on the side facing me so that I can kind of see at a glance. Now I have multiple layers, so I can't see everything, but at least the first row I can see. And if I have to dig any deeper, I can just kind of move one row out of the way and then I can see the whole next row, et cetera, et cetera. And this can come in handy for labeling other things as well. You could use it to label your spare storage. You could use it to label your drills if you keep them separate from your canvases after you've opened them or whatever. But I really like it. It's come in super handy in lots of other ways besides diamond painting. So if you have one already for other things, maybe think about what you could use it for diamond painting. So then I think most of the rest of this is, well, most of it is things that you use after you're done diamond painting. One of the things that you could do with diamond painting is to, especially with canvases that have a lot of white, you can use mica powder to kind of disguise those gaps. So I have some mica powder in white and in black that I got just on Amazon and it's just this very fine powder. This is what they mix in with the resin to make the fairy dust drills. So, but I have this in black and white. It helps hide the gaps. I could have used my rulers. If I didn't use my rulers, then I could use something like this just to make my canvas look a little bit prettier and make those gaps not so noticeable. And again, I have this in black and white and it was just very inexpensive on Amazon. The other thing that you might want to do is seal your diamond painting. Now beware because sealing your diamond painting can void your warranty depending on what company it is. But I have sealed paintings before just because maybe they were special drill paintings and I wanted to make sure the special drills didn't fall off or it was an off the canvas item and I wanted to make sure because it was going to get wear and tear kind of being bumped around that things didn't come off. Or I have also sealed things because I had popping drills and I didn't want things moving around so I wanted to seal it. Now, I've used several different things. I bought this Craft Buddy Crystal Art Sealer. I bought this on Amazon. I don't know if you can still get it anymore. Craft Buddy is a UK company. The last couple times that I've looked this up on Amazon, it is not available. So I don't know if for some reason Craft Buddy is no longer making it or they're just not shipping it via Amazon to the US. I don't know. But it worked great. So if you can get your hands on this, it is specifically made for crystal art, for diamond paintings and that kind of thing and it works really well. If you can't get a hold of that, and it was, I don't remember how much I paid for this, but it was a little pricey, I remember. I went ahead and did it because it was specifically for crystal art and it was coming from the UK, so I figured, you know, that was gonna cost me a little extra in shipping and whatnot. But if you can't find that, I have used Mod Podge. It is just a water-based glue sealer and finish, it says. I got the gloss so that it would still stay shiny. I will say, however, for both of these, both the Crystal Art and the Mod Podge, after I sealed the paintings, I would go over the drills either with a wipe, a baby wipe, or with a damp rag to kind of wipe as much of it as I could off of the top of the drills because that's where the drills are shiny is all the facets, right? So if you go over it like that, it shouldn't affect whether you're using the gloss or the glitter or the whatever, it shouldn't matter because you're gonna be wiping it off the top of the drills. Just these to seal. And I've had, like I said, good luck with both of those. So after it's done and it's sealed, then what do I wanna do? Well, I like to put mine in a portfolio. So I have double-sided tape that I just got from a budget diamond painting company. It's just double-sided tape that I can cut to length and I put it on the back of my diamond painting and then I peel off the second side and I adhere it to a big piece of black cardstock that I got on Amazon. I wanna say it's like 11 by 17 or something like that. And that size fits very nicely in these portfolios, these A3 portfolios. So I will just get one of these portfolios, finish my small diamond painting, adhere it to the cardstock, and then put it in here so that it looks all nice and neat. I have, I think, four of these portfolio books right now. Not full, but I have four of them. I think two of them are full, and I'm working on the third. Then, let me talk about these other things here. If you want to keep, oh, let me save this one. If you want to keep track of your diamond paintings. I use a disc system. This is just an old planner that I've stolen the cover off of and I've turned it into 
a diamond painting logbook. And if you would like my diamond painting logbook, you are uh, welcome to go look in the about page on my YouTube channel. There is a link to my shared diamond painting files and you will find the free downloads for these diamond painting logs. I like these because then I can go back and look and see what I completed in a year. They let you keep track of all kinds of things, the size, how many colors, when you ordered it, how much it cost, any notes that you might want to keep on whatever. You can keep track of what's in your stash. And then at the back, there was a place to keep track of your finishes for the year. And I have a cute little kind of bullet journal tracker that I use to keep track of what I, as I finish things as well. So you might wanna keep a log book. If you don't wanna keep an actual physical log book, you can use the Gems Flow app or something like that to keep track of it digitally. I also know lots of people who keep track of it on like their uh, Google Drives. They will have a spreadsheet or something that keeps track of all of that. However works best for you, but having a log book is something you might want to have. Then I think what's left is kind of what to do again after diamond painting is finished. I have spare drill storage that I made for myself. I designed cards, index or divider cards. I designed the stickers. I bought the plastic bags. I found a box that worked for me. I'll stick a link up there to that particular video. But I basically just used my cutting machine to cut out all of these little tab dividers and they're really all the same. I just flip flop them so they would be opposite. So when I put my stickers on them, it would be a little bit easier to see if that makes sense. And I did mine in two colors. I have blue for my round drills and I did this kind of neon pink for my square drills. And then I made little stickers that fit on here with all of the DMC colors. And then I bought these plastic bags on Amazon. These are, I think, two and a half by three inch plastic bags. These are four mil. I like the thicker bags. You can get two mil bags, but for me, they're just not as sturdy as the four mil ones. So I prefer the four mil ones. And then I made myself a set of stickers in round and square, just like this, but they printed, I printed, all of the DMC codes and the DMC codes for ABs so that I could keep all of my spare drills. Now, that's where this comes in. If you're going to keep your spare drills, you might want some sort of color card like this. There are 447 colors of DMC being used for diamond painting currently. Don't know if that will ever change, but be sure if you're looking up DMCs, you're looking at diamond painting DMCs because if you're talking embroidery floss, there are way more colors that don't get used for diamond painting. But a color like this will give you, this one says the DMC, it tells you the name, it will tell you the RGB value, it shows you a color here, and it will give you the RGB code. I think that's not really an RGB code, that's what they call that, a hex code. Anyway, you can get something like this and you have this blank little square here so you can match drills by color if you, have a kit where you think the color is off or you have some kits don't come with the DMCs on them and you want to try and match them up this might be helpful honestly I never use this I use the DMCs that come on the baggies usually if they don't have DMCs on them I usually don't keep my extra drills so something like that can come in handy so like I said I have a box that I keep my spare drills in because I like to save mine so I can use them for other projects. If I have a blank canvas, or if I want to do a cross stitch conversion, or if I have a heaven and earth design canvas where I have the canvas, but I don't have the drills, I can use my spare drills for that. So in addition to coming up with a way to store them, I initially had all of my regular drills and my AB drills in the same place. It got to be overwhelming. I wanted to keep it to just two boxes and it was getting to be more. So I decided to take out my ABs because I don't have ABs in every single color. So I just found some like baseball card sheets that I had laying around from something else. And I decided this was how I was going to store my ABs. So these are my square ABs. That also includes like these are square rhinestones and Anything that I might come across, I have some glitter drills in here. I did once upon a time. 
and I've got at the back here I've got some like quad cubes that I bought for a particular project and I had some left over so anything like that goes in this and I have another binder that is a little bigger than this because I have more round ABs but it's the same three ring binder with the same setup for me to store my AB drills. I find this more helpful than storing them with my spare drills because AB, this is a little more visual because ABs don't always exactly match the drills that you're using. So sometimes when you're doing a painting, you might want, like you can see here in this particular one, these are all two 10 ABs, but sometimes it looks like there's two or three different colors in here because the bottoms of them don't always match the color that you're using. So you can see the ones down here are quite a bit darker than the ABs up here. So same thing with die lots. So sometimes maybe even though it says 208 DMC, you wanna use a different one because you think it matches better. So it's just a more visual way to keep track of everything. What haven't I talked about? All right, so I've got just a couple more things here to talk about, and that is these two items. These you can get pretty much anywhere, Walmart, Target, any store like that. I use static guard when I'm kitting up my drills if I have drills that have a lot of static. There are lots of people who will tell you they swear by dryer sheets. If those work for you, then go for it. There are lots of people who will tell you they swear by using alcohol rather than the static guard. If that works for you, go for it. I have tried both of those. They do not work for me as well as the static guard. This works for me every time. So this is what I use. The goof off I use if I have stickers or labels on my containers that do not want to come off. I will use this to remove any residue or whatever to get all the, the containers clean so I can use them again the next time. I did get a tip recently about heating them up, just like running a blow dryer over the top of them with kind of some warm air to heat the glue up a little bit to make it remove more easily. I'm gonna try that, but if that fails, then my goof off hasn't let me down so far. So there's those two things. This is my pen storage. We all like to collect diamond painting pens and this is how I keep mine. This is actually a storage case that I got off of Amazon that's made for like drawing markers, alcohol markers, but it works just as well for my diamond painting pens, so that's what I use it for. You can get racks that you can set on your desk. You can get 3D printed little th pen holders to hold your pens. There is a million different things that you could do to store your pens. However you wanna do it and however makes the most sense to you, you have options. I did mention storing finished diamond paintings in portfolios. However, that A3 portfolio only works up to about 40 by 60. So if you're someone like me who likes to do larger projects, then you might need something larger than that. I currently have three sizes of portfolios. I have the A3, which is where I keep pretty much everything 30 by 30-ish, 30 by 40 goes in there. Anything that gets into the 50 by 60 or bigger realm, I have a larger portfolio. I have two of those. I haven't even filled up the first one yet, although I'm on my way to that. And then for my extra large diamond paintings, which is a lot of my diamond art clubs, I have a very large portfolio case, which is actually a zippered case meant for carrying TVs, and I will stick a picture of it over there. I just have it laying on a table in my basement, and I basically have all my diamond paintings laying flat inside of it to keep all the dust and dirt and grime and everything off of them until I figure out what I'm gonna do with them. Many I frame, but a lot I don't, so they end up getting stored in those portfolios. The other thing that I want to mention is that there's always something new coming out. For as many things as I have shown you here, again, none of which are necessities, but for as many things as I have here, there are probably that many and more that you could be using in your diamond painting. Now, again, do you have to have all of these things? Absolutely not. Are some of them really nice to have? Yeah, they are. Like these rulers, I very rarely use, but back when, a couple years ago, when I was doing my 30 by 30 challenge to see if I could finish 30, 30 by 30s in 30 days, a lot of those had white backgrounds and 
because white backgrounds kind of draw attention to gapping, having these rulers to use on some of those kits was a real lifesaver. So even though I don't use them all the time, I do hang on to them. I do have lots of pro products that I use a lot, like my funnels. I absolutely love both of these funnels. And again, could I be using the inexpensive ones like this? I absolutely could. I just don't happen to like them as well. So I bought these two. You can get all kinds of 3D printed things. Companies that 3D print things are always coming up with new products. Bella Art has all kinds of products, including the little table clamps so that you can roll your diamond painting if you're working on a very large project. They've got trays, tray holders. They've got cover minders. Just, I mean, if you can think it's somebody's probably 3D printing it. And some of them seem super simple, you know, having something to clean off your containers doesn't sound like earth shattering or anything. Having something to help you deal with static doesn't sound earth shattering, but it's super nice to have <laughs> because static can be so super frustrating. Like I said, do I need a drill grinder? I don't need it, but it did come in very handy the few times that I used it. The mica powder was an interesting experiment and I probably... I have some ideas for some things I'm going to do with that. We'll see how that turns out. My rolling pin or brayer is an absolute must. I use that on every diamond painting. So just a ton of things. Again, do you need all of them? No, you absolutely do not. And sometimes you try things and you end up not liking them. And this is, I shouldn't say not liking them. You just end up with something you like more or that works better. So for a long time, these were my go-to tips, not this one. These were my go-to tips for using squares. This is basically just a plain barrel that these this company has 3D printed and turned into a tip. And you can get this set that came with a one, two, three, four, my six I broke, and an eight placer. And the reason I love them for squares was because of the way the barrels were put together it picked up your drills, your square drills, perfectly aligned and perfectly spaced so that when I put them on the canvas, you couldn't tell I was using a multi-placer. Obviously, newer tips have come along since then, so these don't get as much use, but I still have them. This is another tip that I bought very early in my diamond painting career. It is a curved multi-placer because one of the things that helps you multi-place better is that you rock it down so having a curved multi-placer just lends itself even easier to that. And so I bought this curved multi-placer. However, not too long after that, other multi-placers came along that I liked better. And so while I still have these, they just don't see as much use as some of my other items. There's always something new coming out. For instance, I have seen somebody advertising anti-static trays. So trays that you are meant to kit up into but they are supposed to be, I guess, anti-static in them of themselves. So if you put drills in them, they somehow get rid of the static. There are all kinds of 3D printed items, like I said. Diamond painting companies are making changes all the time and innovations into how they do things. For example, you can now get perforated cover sheets on diamond paintings, which means that you don't need washi tape or a ceramic cutter to section them, you can just rip along the perforations and tear off the size of section that you wanna work on and go to town. And I imagine that we will see more of these innovations and more changes as diamond painting remains popular and people pick up the hobby and more and more of those innovations are made. Okay guys, <laughs> I think that's everything I can think of to tell you. I mean, like I said, I'm sure there's probably things that I forgot things that I don't even know about that are out there. I will be the first to admit that I don't keep on top of every single new item that comes out, but it's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to keep track of. And if you're someone who's new to diamond painting, just the sheer amount of options out there could be completely overwhelming. So I certainly understand people who are new to the hobby kind of going, ugh. And like I said from the very beginning, do you need all of these things? You absolutely do not. You can make do with things that you have on hand. If you have Ziploc baggies, I mean, I've seen people on YouTube making their own, taking a regular baggie and a hot knife and sizing it down to make the size that they want. So you definitely don't need all of these things. You don't have to spend money on all of these things. But some of them are really nice if this is something that you do a lot. Like I said, my funnels here, 
absolutely love both of those. Well, well worth the money. My, I have my rolling pin that I use. Love it. Wouldn't diamond paint without it. Storage and portfolios and all that kind of stuff, that becomes kind of more personal depending on what you're going to do with it. Maybe you give away every diamond painting you do so you don't have to worry about saving your spare drills or storing your paintings anywhere and all that kind of stuff. Maybe you have zero interest in keeping a log book and keeping track of what diamond paintings you finish. However you want to do it that makes sense to you is how you should do it. But if it's something that you're going to keep doing as a hobby, it makes sense to invest in some tools that just make your life easier. All right, guys, I think that's it for today. That's it for part three. That's it for this series. Thank you so much for everybody who was interested in this series. I hope it was informative for everyone. I will stick links down below to as many things as I can. I'm not going to stick links to like Static Garden Mod Podge. You can find those kind of things on your own. But as many of this other stuff as I can, I will stick links to down below so you can check them out if you're interested in any of them. Before you leave, guys, don't forget to do all the things. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And hit that bell notification icon so that you can be informed of future uploads. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching.